trunks with black trim, hailing from Pretoria, South Africa, now fighting out of Newport Beach, California. He weighed in at 224 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 36 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the challenger, ranked the number one heavyweight contender by the IBF, introducing the white buffalo, Francois Brota. across the ring is the defending world champion on my left fighting out of the red corner entering the ring uh, wearing green trunks with white lettering fighting out of and proudly representing Detroit Michigan he weighed in at 219 pounds his record includes 37 wins only one defeat 30 wins coming by way of knockout Please welcome the former light heavyweight world champion, and now in his second reign as a heavyweight title holder, he is the IBF heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Double M, Michael Morer. And once again, our referee in charge of this bout now to give instructions, Mills Lane. All right, Kitty, if he goes, let me be quiet. If he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low, all right? Right here is going to be all right, all right? Understand? All right, gentlemen, this is the champion for the world. I've already given you instruction in the dressing room. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? The champion. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. The unmistakable play of Mills Lane. Franz Botha, undefeated his ring record, though, not a who's who of boxing. Tonight on this mammoth stage before Tyson Holyfield, big opportunity to silence his critics, in which Michael Moore will show up tonight. The one whose 12 heavyweight fights up until his win over Holyfield lasted an average of five rounds, or the Moore whose last four fights averaged 11. A champion who loved to war in the past, but far more conservative and inconsistent of late. And he, he blames a, a nasty divorce with a child custody thing that had him all confused. He says, that's all behind him. Everything's straightened out. And he's back to being Michael the Vicious. And so let's see if he is. Well, I'll tell you what. I think this first round is going to be very important for both fighters to taste and test that power. Whoever's got the power in the first round should start out with a big edge. Mora works out of the southpaw stance, not known as a fast starter, although he did start out fast in round one against Axel Schultz, but then settled into a more methodical pace. He, he has lost his focus and gets lackluster sometimes in the later rounds, which drives Teddy Atlas crazy. Now, Franz Boza is, is a struggle. Oh, nice right hand by Boza. He, he um, likes to, to brawl. He likes to, you know, he's a beer barrel going at it. But There's a... Sharp right hook by Michael Moore that tagged the cheek of Botha. Both of the land his shots looping to right, and the, as you saw there, looping around, looping under. He is a little more unorthodox, comes from some awkward angles, and is effective in that awkward style. Michael Moore, classic stand-up boxer puncher from the southpaw style, equally difficult to face because he is so strong, and southpaws are always tough to fight. Against the lefty Moore, Botha will need a good right hand, followed by a left of the body. Those body shots taking out the, the legs. The jab should be relatively ineffective against Moore. You don't want to lay on the ropes against Michael as well or stay too long on the inside and test his power. Try to get in and out as fast as possible, I would think, if you're Franz Botha. Botha's been doing all the fighting here, even though it's not effective uh, fighting, but he is uh, popping the... Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's throwing a heck of a right hand. A roundhouse right followed up by a short right. I think he Moore lost that, his balance. Yeah, I think he almost actually tackled him. His hand wrapped around his head and... Pulled him in a little bit, but it I, wasn't a real effective shot. Yeah, well, that, that wasn't a punch. That was that wasn't him get hit. That, that was, was a punch. <laughs> that was the right hand. He's been landing that right hand with surprise, with surprising authority. Straight right, right hand by Franz Botha, countering straight right by Michael Moore. Swinging a miss with the left hook. Oh, and momentarily dazed is Michael Moore. Franz Botha having a big first round. Botha well, seems pretty strong. He's landing that right hand. 
Morris coming back to his credit, keeping his hands up and not panicking, but that right hand is working for both of right now. Well, both. they're working at two speeds. Both is working in a full speed ahead, and, and Moore again looks like he's going 50 miles an hour. A crunching straight right to the body by Franz Botha, and Botha with all kinds of confidence. He's in a lot better shape aerobically, working very closely on his conditioning heading into this fight. Well, I can't, w I can't wait to hear what Teddy Atlas is going to tell him in the red corner between rounds because he's asleep. He better wake up. Final seconds of the opening round. A productive one for Franz Botha. Again, a big right uppercut to the body by Botha. Now go ordinary. Now get yourself together. You gave him that round. We can't be giving him rounds. Put your legs out straight. Then he has our water. We can't be giving him rounds because he's bullshitting you and he's going to get brave and braver. You hear me? Now listen to me closely. Let him also swallow. Now listen. Don't stay at that medium range. You're throwing those looping right hands. If you're staying right at that medium range, you're going to get hit with it. Double the jab up and close that distance. All right? Close that distance. Move you right away from his All right, let's see where. Moore gets his attention both and then watch watch as Botha makes him pay for it. He makes him set up again and then comes the right hand. Bow! And see, that was not really a right hand. It went over the top of his head. It was one of those Bruce Zeldin type of fights. It went over the head and buckled him. I don't know why. But did you hear Teddy Atlas? That's one of the best young cornermen in the world today and he's working in, in an all-star cast. Ralph, Citro, Lou Duba and Teddy Atlas. Is that a multi-million dollar corner or what? Duva, the number one cheerleader for Moore. Meanwhile, round two, both his confidence got a big jump stuff in the opening round when he discovered he could connect repeatedly with his right hand. And Teddy Atlas said it, too. He said, you gave that round away so you can figure out how I've scored it. Even Teddy Atlas said, you gave the round away. Don't do it. Don't let him get any courage and build it up and put some momentum together. It's a curious thing about Moore. He can talk about being his mind being there, but then it isn't. I mean, you, you know you don't want to start like this. You know he didn't want to start like that, giving away that round and getting hit that hard. How many times have we seen Teddy Atlas need to deliver those rambunctious motivational speeches in the corner to Michael Moore? Well, he's lucky he's got Teddy Atlas. He's lucky he's got him. It's a very unique marriage, a, a strange relationship, but quite a chemistry. You know, to look at Franz both, you don't see a tremendous amount. He doesn't look like a rip sculpted guy, but he has unusually heavy hands and pretty good strength and power. He has what we call heavy hands when he hits you. That transition time is a lot. But both are certainly looking a lot more physically fit than we have ever seen him before. He's a little flabby around the midsection, but his shoulders seem a little broader. He's like a guy we used to have called Two-Tone Tony Galento. You didn't want to see him in, the, in an alley. You didn't want to get in a beer room fight with him. And he looked like this, but he dropped the great Joe Lewis. Okay, and wait a minute. Get that off that elbow. The elbow, come on. Come on, let's go. The take charge, Mills Lane. You don't get away with anything in his courtroom. He Mills is a Lane, district. He is a judge from Reno, Nevada. Mills Lane sets a standard, and that's by which things will be followed. Yeah. Well, both are not only pulling it off offensively there, but also has a good heart and a pretty good chin. He got off to a good start against Axel Schultz, you recall, as well, in his last fight. Almost a year ago, they took that title away when he tested positive for steroids, but he claimed it was for an injured arm, and it was prescribed by a doctor. Well, you know, if you look at his body, there doesn't seem to be signs of anabolic steroids, big ripped muscles. So what maybe a lot of truth to that, but Michael Moore is starting to get the rings now yeah. with the jab in the left hand. Moore is starting to come on now here in the end of round two. You see there, Moore slipped that right hand. He's getting out of the way to the right hand now. It's not finding a home, and he's countering with the straight left, doing a good job. But you know, Bosa doesn't, Bosa doesn't stop. He keeps right on going. I mean, he's getting some shots here, but he keeps right on fighting back. You know, yeah. but he does it at such a lethargic type pace that it's amazing to me how successful he's been. He just keeps coming, but never really quickly, never really fast. You yeah, know, well, that right hand he just threw was fast and hard. I mean, he, he loves you. He loves you in the sleep. Final 10 seconds of round number two. A digging right uppercut by Bosa to the midsection of Moore. Let's go over to Jim Gray with some other champions. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by two of the world champion New York Yankees, Tino Martinez and Timmy Raines. Tino, your first fight. How does the atmosphere in this building right now compare to a World Series game? 
Well, it's a lot more tense, I think, because at any second a big blow could be thrown and everybody's kind of in, right at that big moment. In a, in a World Series game, it's a course of nine innings and you get a big blow, you can recover and come back later on. But right here, it's just from any second now, something could happen. Hey, Timmy, let me ask you, the adulation and all of the accolades that the Yankees continue to receive, it's like the parade has never ended. Well, it's like a dream that never ends. You know, uh, you know, you always wonder what it would be like. And, and I, it took me a long time to get there, and I hope it never ends. A lot of people used to hate the Yankees. Doesn't seem like that here in public, does it? Well, that's true. You know, I think uh, they all jumped on the bandwagon, I, and, I th and I think it's great. Jim Tino, congratulations on a great year. Many of the other Yankees here behind us. Let's go back over to Steve. All right, Jim, again in the main event, it's New York versus Atlanta, Tyson versus Holyfield in what many consider the World Series of Boxing. Here we go, round three. Michael Moore in the green trunks, the champion. Ron's both in the white, the challenger, and, and both has done a real nice job, although Moore is showing signs in the last, last round coming back. The last round, Moore fought a good round for a sharp and smart round, and he, and he took that round. That's what he has to do. He's got both on retreat. What both have told me in the interviews, he has to get Michael going backwards. He can't do it if he's going backwards. But both has a tendency to lower his left hand, and Moore has been able to jab over it. Here's a straight right hand by Botha, but doing no damage. Defended well by Mora. Botha able to punch his way out, comes charging forward. Watch the head, says Mills Lane, as they came close together. Good pick there defensively again by Mora. Mora's starting to box much better now, much more determined, throwing more meaningful punches. That was the kind of even round. Blistering left hook by Michael Moore. Ferocious punching power. Moore is the puncher of the two. He's doing a good job. But you see, he also watches his pace. I think both has to push him, frustrate him, and maybe even outright charge him a little more often. Little head fake by both of them to get out of the way. Watch the heads again, says Mills Lane. Very dangerous on the inside. But those little inside uppercuts, he's on the other side of him. You can't see him. You see his head going up and down. That was the inside uppercuts that Moore was landing, not, not heads. Hey, hey, one step back. Come on, hey. Watch the heads. Come on. We're approaching the final minute of round three. Again, the, the warning from Mills Lane about the heads. Moore are starting to block the punches and counter much more effectively. Both is going to have to go to something new. Yeah, he, he's established a pattern now. He's coming on. Oh, Botha is locked. Combination. Mora looking to finish Botha off. A flurry by Mora. Can Botha hang on? Looking to hold on physically to Mora. He's going to go. Steve, he's trying, but he's not going to make it if he keeps putting his hands up in the air like that. There's the timer remaining in round three. Can Botha withstand this barrage by the left-hander Mora? Oh, a straight right to the head of Botha. Well, you know that Moore is a great finisher once he gets you in trouble. Both in desperate trouble, bleeding, his mouth open. Botha is bleeding. He's going to make it through this round, I think, Steve, but I'll tell you what. This sets a precedent for the rest of the night. His chin is not beyond Michael Moore's reach. He has to survive eight more seconds. It looks like the right eye of Botha that has opened up. Oh, at the bell. Moore lands again. Watch the trouble that Botha gets in as he gets hammered. It's a, you see that punch is already effective. Now comes the killer instinct of Moore. Moore comes from all angles. When he gets you in trouble, you don't know where that punch is coming. What a battering he's taken, and there's no defense for it as Franz Botha is helpless, virtually helpless. Sterling McPherson in the corner of Franz Botha screaming at his man. You never went to the ropes in training. Why are you doing it now? Very intense, a major sense of urgency in the corner of Franz Botha. 
Well, in, in both of the corner, they're saying you never went to the ropes in the gym, and he should have said, yeah, and I never had Michael Moore pounding on me in That's the gym. exactly right. Michael Moore has something to say and something to do about it, Birdie, and I'll tell you what. Right now, he has tasted the power. He didn't think he could get hurt, and now he's getting hurt again. Moore is trying to bag the white buffalo here in round four. And the, and the trouble is it's so early in the fight that Moore has got all of his energy. All of his energy. And uh, French, both of, looks like a spent fighter already. I mean, he's almost knocked out in that last round, and he's weary. Whereas Moore looks nice and fresh. Yeah, the condition he can only take you so far when you're faced with this kind of power. Well, the punishment is what wears you out. Yes. You know, Michael is a crisper puncher. We talked about it before, sharper combinations. It's the combination, the second, third, and fourth shot that are going to make the big difference. Moore just needed a little wake-up call after round one. And it has been all Michael Moore since the bell to end round one. Well, if, if Moore can look very impressive here finishing and finishes off both of them, then he is really the next up for Tyson. He will, he will make the next fight big if That's he looks it. good, if he looks good here. If Tyson beats Holyfield. That's right. That's right. Thank you for correcting That's me. That's quite all right. I, I take those things like Get out of here. Get out of here. Minute 20 left in round four. Balls assure me he's going to push Michael Moore back. When he does this, it's okay. He gets, off. he gets the better of Michael a little bit, but he has not been able to be effective because he apparently does not have good defensive skills while he's on the attack. You have to have automatic defensive skills almost built in when you're attacking. Yeah, but has Michael Moore let Botha off the hook here? He seems to have pulled back a little bit, and Botha looks like he's starting to dance around now and looking to regroup for the final minute of the fourth round. Well, I don't know if he's let him off though completely, but he's let him off though for now, that's for certain. Let's we'll see what happens from this point on. Mora continues to press the attack, but a very game front. Botha hangs in there. He telegraphs those right uppercuts toward the body of Mora, then a straight right hand by Botha. Nothing on the punches, though. Right. Nothing, nothing. Feather punches. A lot on the punches oh. of Michael Moore in sharp contrast. What a nice body shot that was by Michael Moore. You know, I want to see what happens when Moore comes up the middle with one of those big left uppercuts. That's where he's going to be really effective as well. Yeah. All right, let's step back, please. Let's step back. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. the bell for round four. Well, two-time world heavyweight champion Vander Holyfield dancing around in the dressing room getting ready for Mike Tyson in our main event. Holyfield's last four fights, stamina has been a factor, whether it's a product of his medical history or the wear and tear and age catching up, stamina has played a role of late. And it was in his loss to Michael Moore in 94 when he first looked lethargic, not his usual energetic self. We'll see how he handles himself, particularly early against Mike Tyson. Showtime executives at ringside on hand. There's Matt Blank, the president and CEO of Showtime Networks Incorporated, looking on rather intently. So here we go, set for round five, scheduled for 12, the IBF heavyweight title. Michael Moore getting some last uh, second instructions from Teddy Atlas. And Sterling just told both of you got a coward in front of you. <laughs> I'll bet you that's news to a lot of men who've been starched by him. <laughs> I, I, I bet both of said, where, where? I didn't see him. I didn't see one. You know, trainers will do almost anything to build up their fighters' confidence, build up their egos, and get them going. So anything can be said and or done. Yeah, but you got to maintain some level of credibility. I mean, you can tell a lot of things to a fighter, but he ain't dumb. He's, he's sitting there saying, oh, yeah. Franz Botha knows the real story. Yeah, somebody's he's the one there. fighting. More 37-1 with 30 knockouts. The only loss to George Foreman. He was controlling the fight for nine rounds. He got knocked out by a straight right in the tent by Big George, who was then 45. And Franz Botha undefeated, 36-0, 21 knockouts, but a very questionable list of opponents. And I talked to Michael Moore about that knockout because a lot of people thought he just decided to not get up in the heck with this whole thing. But he said, Bobby, you know you've been hit. Sometimes your legs just don't cooperate with your with your head. You're saying get up, but nothing's working. And I know what he means. Yeah, and from the category, just in case, remember Moore dominated Foreman, as I mentioned. 
and then found himself on the canvas in the 10th round. Of course, Franz Botha is not George Foreman. By, by several light years, <laughs> he's not right. George Foreman. Chronologically, yeah, yes. By any way, by any measure of, of time or, or weight. Oh, a wild right hand there that missed by Franz Botha looking for the end all punch there in one fell swoop. Michael digging a couple nice right hooks to the body, but he seems to have slowed down a little bit. Maybe he thinks that if he lets both of just punch, he can maybe punch himself out and unload back, but he just seems to be a little slow right now, not really getting off as he should. And both are just hammering away with the right hook. He's, he's blowing the round. He's letting this round go to more. You know, I, I have to take my hat off to, to both of Both of was out on his feet. He came back and just passed that last round. Now he's carrying Ooh, the action here. Low blow by Franz Botha. Mills Lane tells him to get those punches up. Well, we oh, another low blow. We, we mentioned now Mora retaliates with a low blow of his own. Now he goes upstairs. The infighting continues. Now they break. See, Mora staying tight on the inside. Oh. Not not on the tail end of that right hand most of the time, trying to cut that distance and compromise the power. Both are just walking into punishment right now. Well, both have just landed three good right hands of the kind that George Foreman landed, like sweeping right hands. But, so what is Moore doing taking those punches? He shouldn't be taking those right hands. They're both taking a lot of punches straight right. Now, a combination by Moore working to the face. Back comes both and a left hook by Moore. Oh, what a furious exchange. See, it's a very good pace for heavyweights. See, uh, that's just right hand. Count the number of right hands. It's been an, a right hand festival for yeah. both of them. They are just winging away, wailing away at each other in the final seconds of round five. Straight right hand, but a grazing blow by Mora. Luckily for both of them. Both of them did very well in that round. All right. That's what I'm talking Hands down. Hands down, right here. All right. Okay, Ty, that's the rally. Come back. Here. All right, Yance. Come, here. come on. Here, give him some water. Who you want? All right, now you're fucking doing what I want you to do. You understand? Now you're back in the fight. Take a deep breath. Come on. Come on, baby. Rinse the mouthpiece out. Right here. Give it to this guy. Here. Come on, give me more. I'll give you more. Open up your mouth. Do you hear me? Do you? Well, do something now. Don't wait till tomorrow, because tomorrow will be too late. Do you hear me? You got to deal with it for minutes. You don't do it, you got to deal with it for life. Now look, you're walking into right hands, goddammit. Move to your right, all right? Bump the jab and let that straight left hand step in. Throwing wide punches, all right? And punch in combination. Here we go at round number six. The two corners fired up. Sterling McPherson with Franz Botha and Teddy Atlas with Michael Mora. Sterling McPherson was a good fighter, and he, he, he's a good trainer. He, he tries, he's not quite Teddy Atlas, but he sure does motivate a fighter, and he believes that both has taken Iran. I did too, and that makes it kind of an interesting fight. I mean, it's not all Michael Morris. We thought things are evening out. I got it 48-47. Well, I tell you, I have it 48-46 for more of it. Just coming back to the corner after the last round, oh, both of them looked right, somewhat defeated. He had a defeated look on his face, but he came right out through the first punch. And he just answers that bell. Both are looking for the, the uppercut straight up the middle, but missed. And he keeps putting that right hand in there. You know, it's like Akawandi's right hand in the last fight. He just keeps landing it. I mean, how much can Moore take of that? I mean, Moore's not got that tough a beard. He's been down a lot. Both are comes off a very good round. As you heard his We're trainer, Sterling McPherson, down, say, down. now you're back in the fight. That might be uh, stretching it just a bit, but Mora did look better in the last, uh, both of them did look better. By scoring, I think he is back in the fight. By, if you're looking at the way the, the, the way the tide is going, uh, of course, Mora looks like he's beginning to let the down. Online has Mora ahead, four to one. They had both of winning the first round. Mora won the next four. He has a pretty accurate fight right there. The last round, both the won the majority of the round, and Moore closed it strong. You could have thrown it to both or more. The last round was very tight. Very even. I gave it to both because it was a surprise that Moore wasn't doing more, and both was doing all the action here. Although Moore closed it nicely. But can you imagine the king-sized carrot that you got in front of you, a Tyson fight, and you're, and you're not taking this guy out of there after you had him in trouble? That's unexplainable to me. Well, that to me is motivation enough for uh, Michael Moore, the color green as in money. 
Whether it's Tyson or Holyfield, a slapping right hand by Frank Swapotha. You know, and that's just it, too. The louder the punch sounds, the more of a slap it is. It sounds like a slap. It is a slap. Now, toe-to-toe -to -toe the center of the ring. That last little hook was a bass drum getting hit. That was a hard punch by Moore. Both has got to be careful. He's been resting on the ropes where he gets in trouble, and his corner, you may hear, screaming, don't fall asleep on us. You know, if you look at Botha, he doesn't represent any major threats in any one area. He's not a one-punch knockout artist, certainly not a speedster, hasn't got great defensive skills, but he seems to get the job done against big, tough, top-quality opponents. But I'll tell you, I was lobbying myself to fight him, and I think Michael Moore should just step it up a little bit. He's got, he's right there on the edge of closing the door here. It makes you wonder where Michael Moore is in the grand scheme. Can he beat a Riddick Bo or a Lennox Lewis? Two guys who struggled in their last fights. A thumping straight right hand by both at the bell. So here at the MGM Grand, the MGM Hotel and Casino, the city of entertainment, the scene for three of Mike Tyson's four wins since his resumed career later tonight. He'll be taking on Evander Holyfield in defense of his WBA heavyweight championship. The folks do not want a repeat of what happened last time against Bruce Selden. Here's Bill Boggs. Yeah. All right, with me right now, right now, James Conn, you've had a few fights in movies. How's this look to you? In movies, yes. Yeah, with the, for example, James Conn, with the, the can and the Godfather. That was a yeah, big fight. Well, what do you think about this? Do you think both is holding his own, or is Well, uh, from my vast boxing <laughs> yes. knowledge, my encyclopedia of knowledge, uh, it seems to me that um, uh, that Michael, um, if he circled right, he he has a habit of both the dropping his uh, jab if he well, came we'll over the top of the hook. Let's look. Watch this. Thanks, James. Ooh, that got was, me. That was James Conn. I thought that was Sonny Corleone. Didn't you? The Godfather. He looked, just, he looked just like Sonny Corleone. A man who knows from being riddled. Yeah, I'm not having trouble at toll booths. Round seven. Let's see what both can uh, pull here against the champion Michael Moore. This is for the IBF heavyweight title. Scheduled for 12. Right off the top of Moore's head. Good duck under move by Moore to elude. Now I'll tell you, some of those punches on top of the head hurt a little more than they might appear. The head, yes, indeed is hard, but there's a soft spot up there, and it does hurt, as does the temple shots. The fight doctor just got sprayed right in the eye. You all right? Yeah. Now Moore just barreling in. Bulldozing his way in on Franz Bolder, who uh, is able to spin out of trouble. See, when Michael drives his punches underneath like that, he's got to then just come straight up. Came straight up and into Bolter, because he's got him compromised. He's got the leverage. He's on the inside, and he can hurt Bolter. Bolter goes 6'2", 224. Moore is 6'2", 219. They're almost even. Two-inch reach advantage for Moore. Almost mirror images. Slapping right again by Bolter. Not doing any damage. Then he goes to the midsection with the right uppercut. Again, Moore just shakes it off easily. Straight well, right hand. Keeps his hands tight too, Steve. You see how tight he keeps his hands. Hard to hit and clean. Big George threw a nice one down the pipe, and Michael opened up and looked, and there it was. I think that wouldn't happen in 200 times so far. He was getting killed. He should. That fight should have been stopped in around the eighth round. He was getting such a beating. Up. And you wonder if both can draw from that wild episode for inspiration. Logic says uh, unlikely, but oftentimes logic and boxing don't go hand in hand. Now again, both are off the ropes. He's got to be careful. That's where Mora wants him. On the ropes. Oh, a straight right hand that staggered both of momentarily. Actually, that was a little bit of a right hook. He was compromised with his feet, but as a southpaw, he oh, just yeah. kind of turned, slanted it in. Both comes right back, Bobby, with a straight right of his own. Little right uppercut to the jaw of both of Mora. Well, both is a gutsy guy. He didn't come here to lose, so now we have a fight. And the crowd really getting behind the challenge of both of in the center of the ring. Furious exchange. And the action was 80% both and he's still at it. Both are still at it. He's still punching. What heart being displayed by Franz Botha. The biggest key here, the difference being that both is not putting his hands up. Michael blocks his shot, then fires. Botha gets hit, then fires, then gets hit again. He's got to bring his hands up. He's got to He's got to cover up. A smacking right hook by Franz Botha. Mora counters. But Botha now with more steam on his punches as we head for the bell. A great round for Botha. Great round for Botha. Come on, you got a punch for Christ's sake. Let me take it out of here. Come on, you got a punch for Christ's sake. You got a punch for Christ's sake. You got a punch. I'll tell you, no, be 
quiet. You, you don't want to fight no more? I swear to God, I will have this man stop the fight if you don't want to fight. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you understand that? Michael, do you understand that? Look, if you freaking don't want to fight, then you freaking might as well stop right now. Are you going to stop fighting? You're behind in this fight. Damn it. Take this. You're behind in this fight. Now listen, you're standing at a distance letting them pot shot you with right hand. You can either faint them, let it miss, and then step in with your jab, all right? Faint them, come in off the right, or just step in with double jabs with straight left hands. When you throw those right right hands, you gotta hit them with left. And look, you gotta make the choice to punch instead of not punch. You gotta punch, Mike, you gotta punch! Another scorching from Teddy Atlas, and Atlas is in the right. Here we go, round number eight. As Steve, you, Teddy Atlas went all the way across the ring and dragged the referee over to tell him, to listen, I'm going to tell this man to stop the fight, and I'm letting you and him know right now. Yeah, he, he had a big dose of reality because that's what Moore needs all the time. I cannot figure out why. He's a superior fighter. He just doesn't come in to fight. I certainly don't have Moore behind, but I'll tell you what, great motivational speech. There's only one thing left for him to say. Like Angelo Dundee, you're blowing it. You're blowing it. And that's what he was saying in the Holyfield fight to Michael Moore. Uh, I've got him ahead 67-66. Moore, notice that's just one point. I have a 67-65, two points. I scored that one round 10-8. wasn't a knockdown, but it was a total cleanup on, on both. Uh, and I'll tell you one other thing. I thought he lost the fight to Holyfield by a little bit because of his lackluster performance, and so did Teddy Atlas. Yeah, I didn't give him the 10-8. That's the difference in our scorecard, but we're both looking at it the same round by round. I mean, I don't understand why he doesn't trigger our points. As tired as he, as both is, as much as the beating he's taking, look at all the punches he got off that last round. There's another right hand. Uh, there uh, it is. By Franz Botha. That's what I was waiting for, Michael Moore, to come up the middle. All he has to do, he blocks the shot, fire back up the middle. Botha's not picking his hands up, not keeping a tight defense, and Michael's just letting him get away. For a guy that sits slow and looks this sloppy, he sure is landing an awful lot of punches, is both of them. Halfway through the eighth, he is deceptive. Deceptive is the word to use, boy. You just don't think he's going to get it off, and he gets it off. You know, Freddie, I have to agree with you, because I can't imagine even putting myself in front of both of which I've done many times that he would hit me with some of those punches. The online scoring, it's tight with the folks around the country. More of four rounds to three. Yeah, heading into the eighth. That's exactly what we've got here, 4-3. I, I also have a 4-3, but that extra point with the 10-8 round for being hammered from pillar to post for almost two minutes. The fans have the last two rounds for Franz Botha. Less than a minute remaining in round eight. Here comes Mora. Now he's, he's got to keep going. He doesn't. Yeah, he allows Botha to come back with a right hook. Botha with another right hook to the head. Counter punch by Mora. Botha misses and another counter by Mora. Both have got his attention a little more than just a little bit. I think you heard him just temporarily, but Michael being a consummate pro came back. Coming up, we're going to miss dangerous by Franz Botha. He is so exhausted, but he still fights. What a buffalo this guy is. A lot of courage. Franz Botha. Could it be any greater to set up the Holyfield Tyson fight than this kind of action? Yeah, but I'm wondering if Moore isn't looking, losing credibility with every round. Either that or both is gaining it. That's what I'm saying, Bobby. Oh, both is stopped going up no matter what happens after this. Final seconds of round eight. Listen to me, damn it. You're not listening. You're not listening. You got 12 minutes left. That's four rounds. What you do in the next 12 minutes? You're going to have to live with for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. Your little son, he's not going to be told that his son beat Hollyfield. He's going to be told he beat lost to a guy named Volker. Francois Volker, who was thought of with no talent. You understand? Anything you feel, he's feeling the same but worse. You're just not digging. You hear me? And you can't talk about all the things you talk about if you don't perform. Now listen, do you want to live with that the rest of your life? No. Michael, it's going to happen. you got 12 minutes. You're behind. You understand? It's got to start here. This guy's looking to fall down. Now listen, quit giving him right here. Move to your right. Some of the jab, let the straight left hand go. And inside, you have two choices. Find ways not to punch or find ways to punch. Come on, man. You're giving him the fight. And what has developed into a war, we enter into round number nine. Franz Botha has the fans behind them. And Michael Moore came out in that last round 
fighting and then all of a sudden let both of them take over and stagger him with the right hand. You know, if a guy just walked in from the street right now, looked at this fight, he would say, you know, if both is getting killed, he must be way behind. Well, he's not. Not at all. There's a straight right, good head fake by Michael Moore, and he landed flush on the face. See, that's what he has to do, move off some of both slow, lethargic punches and fire. Both are off balance. Botha is exhausted. Bobby, he is there for the taking. He is okay, exhausted. Okay, if Franz Botha were to fight Mike Tyson with no defense like that, that fight cannot go one round. But all the more reason to doubt Michael Mora. He yeah. cannot put him away. That great finishing stuff that he used to have, he doesn't have. Sometimes Mike is a little too conservative. Sometimes he likes to watch and be a little on the cautious side. Air to the side of caution. Well, that's the way he is. And Franz Bother with a thumping right hook. He knows if he gets Michael Moore in the later rounds, this is where Moore really gets inconsistent, loses focus, and gets sluggish. Now how can how can both the time after time after time when he looks so tired get off such hard punches? Well, you gotta admire both of them. You gotta admire this guy. Well, he's a tough, gritty guy, Freddie. I don't think there's any quit in him, but I don't think he has the natural talent of a Michael Moore or other fighters, and it's really taking its toll on him now late. It may be the difference in this fight. And he just, he feels he's the champion. He had it stripped because of steroids. He claims it was prescribed by a doctor. He did beat Schultz. But you know what? He's the one that's got the championship hard in here. Yes. He's the one that's coming back from nowhere and coming back again and again. And the guy that's better and the guy that should be knocking him out doesn't have the championship. You know, as a light heavyweight, Michael Moore was a great finisher as a heavyweight. He lost that reputation because he couldn't put the bigger guys away. And they also were able to hurt him a little easier. So that's something we also have to keep an eye on. Oh, Moore with a quick straight right hand. Now he backs both up. Botha has his hands down low. Moro works in his head. Here comes Botha again with a right, a right hook. Look at this man, Botha. This is Botha's kind of barroom brawl. Botha again looked down and out, and he comes barreling back. Oh, what a sweeping shot by Mora. Again, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe in furious fashion. And the time left, 20 seconds, round nine. What a heart on Franz Brotha. What a heart on this man. He seemingly has nothing left, and he continues to come back. He has a great chin, and he has a great heart, but it's not always going to be enough by themselves. He's got to score. Watch more as he, it looks like he's got him going. It looks like, oh, that's it, going in the corner. He's going to be all over with. And now watch the way France, look at all these shots he's taken. Looks like, well, that's all, that's going to be over. And now here he comes back again and again. And both of us still punching with both arms. And now all of a sudden he puts more on the ropes. I mean, the man is incredible. He doesn't look like anything, but he keeps beating more off. Well, this is some fight, Mike, This is some fight. Out. This turned out to be a much better fight than I anticipated. I didn't think it was going to mount like this and be warfare. Totally unexpected. Both a 5-1 to one underdog. He told us yesterday he'd win because of his new conditioning program, because of his chin and his heart. He's been training hard against Southpaws. Time called by Mills Lane. That was down low. Come on, okay? Watch the low blows. Both are looking exhausted with a minute left in round nine. He has to go about nine more minutes. A good left straight hand there by Michael Morris sending both the back. That's a move. See what Michael did? He slipped off that right hand and fired over the top. He missed his shot, but that is one of the moves where he's going to catch both of, and it's going to be good night. Both the feels that Mora was taking him too lightly going in, looking ahead to either Tyson or Holyfield. And Franz Botha, hate to sound like a, a broken record, but displaying an immense heart here. And jaw. Absolutely. You know, I think we all knew he had a pretty good jaw, a, a jaw, excuse me, and as, as they say, the beard is in place. But what I can't imagine, he looks so tired to start every round, and he just fights back, and he never seems to 
completely brought again, but always looks exhausted. It, yeah, it looks like one of those phony Hollywood movies, you know, where, where the hero is, is always taking a beating and comes back. I mean, this, this is, doesn't seem real. Does Rocky ring a bell? Yeah, it does. This is a script. Well, Michael Moore has had a problem not only in the later rounds with the heavyweights, but finishing off legitimate heavyweights, big sized men, not small heavyweights like a Burke Cooper, but big men like this. And even Evander, who's not a big man, who he hit hard, he couldn't get off his feet. So this is something that has to be in Michael Moore's mind as well. Again, both are off the ropes dangerously. Moore did tell us he's not looking past both of well, it's a good thing he said that because he's he is not standing coming, there. Not coming through here. I, you know, I, I, I have more ahead. I don't know what the new, uh, the Vegas judges have it. I could be any which way, any which way. Final minute of the tenth round. It's fairly close, but I think Michael Moore is definitely in command. Oh, I think no, he has done what he had to. Vicious right uppercut, just at the belt by Franz Bofa. That's going to take some steam out here. And now here comes Moore. Now, if he just stayed there and punched, but he lets him get away. Oh, a straight right hand by Moore. That startled both of them. That was just a jab, Steve. A good shotgun jab. Bolter's defense is not there. And I'm amazed at how slow some of those punches are going that Michael Moore's getting hit with them. I mean, they're being sent by Pony Express. It's unbelievable. Both are telegraphing those punches like right there and a counter right couple of rights by Michael Mora, but what keeps Botha up? Mora has tremendous power. Now he's all over Botha in the final seconds of the tenth. But if there, if there was another minute, this fight wouldn't go. Big finish for Mora. You're going to win the fight. You're going to win the fight. All right, you got six minutes. You got six minutes. You got six minutes, goddammit. Six minutes and the fight is over. You're going to win the fight. Now, come on. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Keep your goddamn hands up, you understand? Give me the towel. Give me a rag. Give me a round. Give me a shot. Here you see Michael Moore doing what he's supposed to do. Now he's working. Stick, sticking that stiff jab like a shotgun jab. Come with a right hand. He's a, he's a little too quick there. He's not got his feet planted, but he's coming on. He's ripping on the inside. He's working. It's late. He wants this decision if it has to be one. Michael, got to be, you got to continue following. The final words of Teddy Atlas and Lou Duva, knockout power. The words from Lou Duva's mouth. As we enter the championship rounds, how the judges see this is increasingly crucial. Time. Low blow by Franz Botha. Time. 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 Come here, Franz. Time. Go over here. Go over here. Come here. It's okay. Take. Come here. Oh, uh, too much uh, gunk Take this around the right Take eye. Yeah, yeah, look at it. Look at it. Too much. Uh, Wait. Too much. All right, here we go. Time. Let's go. Come on. Come on. The Vaseline on the eye to moisturize the skin to try and prevent cuts. And that was... Uh, that was too much. Way too much. Well, I here just comes, didn't take it off. Here comes Michael Moore again with that straight left. The southpaw looking to dig in on both of them. Will the judges be influenced by the long looping big punches by both or will they see it? As you know, I, win can, by the champion. I can empathize for, for the second time as watching Michael Moore over the years and being a fan of his as well. Teddy Atlas's problem because it's, it appears almost that if Michael Moore lights a fire for a good minute, this fight is over. Both looks that tired and that beat. But he comes back with that right hand and again and again. And, and there it is. Power. As I say it, there it is. There's it. Oh, and then Bora answered back with a short, crisp right hand. Right but, there. but it looks like when he's so exhausted, it looks like all of a sudden he comes up two jabs and a right hand real fast. That's amazing. Moore up 6-4 as far as the online voting is concerned. Moore got the last two rounds at home. I got 6-4 as well, but I also have an extra point because of, of the big staggering job that was done early in the fight in the third round. This is where both his new conditioning program really pays off. He said he's in great shape, breathing better. He continues to hang tough. Straight right hand by Michael Moore. It's that jab that's penetrating. And now the left. The combination by Moore. See, All over. There's where it could end. And, and Moore went back. 
He, he just nailed him four or five huge shots, and he went back. But he doesn't finish both of uh, Michael Moore's jab is going to drop Franz Volta at this pace. He's stepping in with the jab, and Volta's walking right into it. Uh, Volta's having his way now. Volta's on the way. Final minute of the 11th round. Volta in trouble. Moore smothering him with punches. And weak punches by Botha. Botha is too exhausted now to hurt Moore, and that is going to be the beginning of his demise. And Moore knows it. He continues to pour in. He, he, just, he just doesn't even have it to throw the punch. Oh, oh there's the right, the right hook, and he throws Botha down. But they're calling it an official knockdown. Four, five, six. Botha gets up quickly seven, on five. Eight, how are you doing? You know, he was hurt, and he might have been on his way to the floor, but Michael helped him with a little shove. Exactly. Final seconds of round 11. Ten seconds. Botha is out of it. There's another straight right hand. It's the jab of Michael Moore doing the damage. He goes into the ropes. He goes down. He's counting. He can only be four. He's counting him. That knockdown was before the round was over. He has to take the mandatory eight count. The bell cannot save a fighter in any round. IBF rules. You're giving the fight away. <laughs> That's you a got three minutes. Come on. Come on. Here. Come on, Francois. Wake up. All right. All right. Give me a rag, Mark. Come on, Francois. If you, give me, if you give me three minutes, you're going to win the goddamn fight. You hear me? Give me three minutes. Come on, Francois. Come on. Sit up. You got to put this at 12 fight. All right, let's take a look at that first knockdown. And this, believe, believe me when I tell you, that's a great right hand. This is a product of exhaustion. More Franz Bost is exhausted. Bobby. Take a look at the second knockdown. Here's a good crisp right hook. And he was on his way. His legs gave out. He just slumped along the rope. Down he goes. The fight of the night to this point as we enter round 12. They'll touch gloves. And here we go. Both are down twice in the last round. 33 seconds left. And at the 0-0 zero, zero mark. I don't think Bolt is going to finish this round if Michael Moore stays on track. Bill's Ray this fight's over. Steps in and stops the fight early in round 12. And Michael Moore gets the embrace from Teddy Atlas. Great, great fight. Good finish. Very dramatic in the corner of Michael Moore. And exhausted Franz Botha as Michael Mora continues to get hugged.